Hi, thanks for joining me. Welcome to another train wreck here. Um, I want to talk about my comic book collection. Now, the idea, so to speak, for this uh, just comes from uh, yeah, Facebook, actually. Um, specifically, Joe uh, X Corn Ruffin X um, tagged me in like a what are some like ten of your not really even like favorite comic books but like comic books that made an impact on you in the past and that you still enjoy reading today and my comics were actually packed away in storage and it just inspired me to like take them out again because I wanted to look at them and I figured as long as I've taken them all out um, I wanted to just go over some of this collection with you guys uh, I don't know if this will be interesting at all but um, but yeah let's get started I have if you guys are familiar with comic book boxes, like the ones you store them in, I have three of the uh, the long boxes. What I'm talking about is like these ones here. That's a, a lid for one of them. And one, uh, one short box, which is like the half size. And honestly, the, the third <laughs> long box is only about half full. So it's, I've basically got three long boxes full of comics. I don't know if that's a lot or I don't know if that's a little. I mean, it just it depends on your collection, I guess. That's what my collection is. Um, and, you know, I I haven't collected comics in like 20 years. Uh, it's This is something I consider largely from my childhood. But um, I don't think I've been... Uh, I don't think I've made a secret of the fact that I, you know, for, for quite a while, in my young adulthood, I really was interested in being an illustrator and illustrating, um, you know, comic books. I mean, that's that's something I was, I was very interested in. Uh, certainly nothing that I do now, but, um, but yeah, you know, I still think, I, th I think, still think artists and illustrators are, are cool. So, Viz, for starters, uh, this was something that I collected in my, like, college years, so I was like, you know, 18 and older. Um, I got, I started getting into some of like the, the manga, some of the Japanese um, comics, and I started getting the individual issues of uh, Battle Angel Alita, also known as Gundam, in, uh, in Japanese. Not, not Gundam, Gundam, different. I also started collecting Ranma one half. So I have, uh, I don't know how many of these I've got. I don't have very many. In fact, I might only have three Ranma comics, which is kind of too bad. Uh, that's like, you know, the official, like, Viz um, releases of them. They're pretty cool. Uh, here I have a little bit of Mermaid's Dream and Mermaid's Forest. These seem like they're, like, probably one-shots of, like, the Mermaid. Uh, I think Mermaid Forest was the name of the, the anime they ended up making from this. But, of course, Rumiko Takahashi. Uh, super cool. I love her stuff. Um, all right, so this jumps into our our my um, Dark Horse, Dark Horse comics, and this whoops as I drop them on the floor uh, is one of my favorite comic series. You know, for better or worse, Aliens. I really like Aliens. Uh, I really got into these movies when I was uh, a teenager, and. Um, these are cool. This mini series in particular, it's you know it's four. This is one of four. Um, these have wonderful artwork. Um, I just I love these covers. They're amazing. This artist that did these paintings is wonderful, and um, and these are just super cool. Uh, it's just it's more alien stories, and I mean they they kind of milked this series for for quite a while. Some 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 are better than others. I really cared about what printing this. This is a fourth printing of. Um, of aliens, this is. I think these were the alien stories that were in Dark Horse Presents. Could be wrong, but then they. I think they did individual volumes of them. I think I have a graphic novel of this, and I have a whole bunch of these alien series. But yeah, there's a bunch. You know, I've got Earth War. Oh, you can't even see that Earth War. Um, I've got. <coughs> Excuse me, Newt's Tale. And these are just cool. I really like the aliens. Um, and speaking of Dark Horse Presents, so uh, I do have some Dark Horse Presents. This was sort of a special thing, and so I don't know, I ended up getting it because it looked cool. Um, but this also had Aliens stuff in it, and I was like, ooh, Aliens. Um, but this is a really cool. This is their fifth anniversary special. And um, so you can see, you know, they were doing Dark Horse Presents for quite a while. There's Aliens vs. Predator, there's Sin City in here. So these were like anthology things that they would run, like serialized. I think of this as like Shonen Jump for, for Dark Horse. Back, back in the day, I mean, man, this is probably from, like, who knows when, 1990, 
I don't even know what, 94 maybe? 93? Something like that. I guess this is Dark Horse Presents uh, of Sin City. Um, I started getting some of the Dark Horse Presents around when, you know, they had Sin City and, uh, and Aliens um, stories in them. Uh, this, this is a super, I don't know why this is a cool cover. Kind of grotesque. It's like a woman gripped in half. Of course she's an android, but anyway. Yeah, so another thing from the time when I was getting into Japanese anime uh, a bit. This is some of the, my first exposure, honestly. I think this is probably why I got into Dirty Pair. Um, yeah, these just this just caught my attention. I'm like, this is super weird. It's This is a, uh, a film comic. Uh, this is something they'll do in Japan where they will... Um, they'll take an anime and they'll make a comic out of it. And Viz decided to release this here. Um, this is based on the first... T a TV episode to kill a computer. Uh, this is Ammo with a Heart, which I actually don't know if that is the second episode of the TV series. I'm not really sure. Um, I almost feel like this is like one of the OVAs or something. Anyway, of course that meant that I was uh, into um, who's this guy? I forget his name. Uh, this dude's Dirty Pair stuff. Oh, Adam Warren. It says it on the on the cover there. Adam Warren's Dirty Pair. This is totally like a, an Americanized. Uh, I think he's American, um, you know, thing, but Dark Horse owned the rights to Dirty Pair, I guess, although it was strangely enough, like, Viz, um, published those film comics, I don't, you know, who knows how licensing works with all this stuff, but anyway, um, they were able to, Dark Horse, uh, he was able to do his own Dirty Pair comic, so. Flame and Carrot. Now, this is something that I didn't, get, I, I feel a little bit bad because I didn't get into, um, just as Flaming Carrot so much as they did a crossover with the Turtles. And I loved anything Turtles, and I loved, you know, Mirage's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And of course, you know, that's why they do these crossover things, so that, you know, people will check out Flaming Carrot. Of course, Flaming Carrot's hysterical. And, uh, so I think I have, like, a graphic novel or two of, uh, some of these issues of Flaming Carrot. Something that feels more recent, even though this is, like, ancient age ages ago, uh, Masamune Shiro... Um, these are the Dark Horse individual volumes of Ghost in the Shell 2, which is super cool. He did a follow-up series of Ghost in the Shell. I was just talking about M66, uh, Black Magic M66. Uh, you guys know I'm a Shiro fan to some extent. And, um, yeah, those are cool comics. Uh, I've got that whole series and individual issues. Uh, just Ghost in the Shell 2, I don't have, um, I don't have the... The original run. I've got that uh, graphic novel of it. Um, Give me liberty. Now let's see. This is a Dark Horse, uh, Frank Miller and Dave Gibbons. This is uh, volume one. I don't know. I guess I don't know a whole lot about um, like how long the series goes. But you know, I like Frank Miller, and um, I have a handful of things. I'm sure that's that's why I got this. And I'm sure this is cool too. I just it's been a while since I've read some of these. Here we have this, you know, again, uh, this is all my Dark Horse stuff, so we're just going to see Dark Horse to start off with. Um, Grendel. They did a Grendel miniseries. And I don't really know where this originates. Uh, I just saw this and I thought it looked cool. Of course, these are the covers by... Oh, come on. Simon Bisley. And I like Simon Bisley. Um, it, he just does cool stuff. So si Simon Bisley has had my attention <laughs> during this time. And uh, so that's why I was really into this miniseries of Grendel, and it's pretty cool. Uh, I actually, I dressed up as Grendel for Halloween one, one year <laughs> when I was a teenager. Anyway, there's some like Grendel, Grendel Tales, another another miniseries that Dark Horse did. Um, a little more manga stuff, some individual issues of Oh My Goddess. I didn't get a whole lot of these, but again, you know. Uh, this was back when I was just sort of first being introduced to... Japanese manga and anime and that sort of thing. Alright, so yeah, more Dark Horse. We have Predator. Uh, this is kind of topical because a new Predator movie just came out and I haven't seen it. Um, but man, I loved, like, I, w I was I was deep into this um, Aliens, Predator, Terminator, like those sort of 80s movies. And this is, this is more in like the 90s. But Dark Horse got like the the rights to make these comics, and they were they were cool. I really liked a lot of these. Uh, this is uh, Predator versus Magnus Robot Fighter, which I never really got into. Dark Horse, uh, continuing with 
pretty awesome, like, sort of licensed movie comics. Uh, a real, very specific kind of, like, niche that they, they were into at the time. Uh, Star Wars Dark Empire. Uh, these are really cool. I like these. I almost wish that... I mean, I'm not one of those people that hates the new Star Wars movies or anything like that, and, you know, I've already, I've already mentioned if you were, like, I don't know anti-social justice warrior or something you can you can fuck right off um but i kind of wanted this to be like a storyline for some new star wars movies you know like um these this is this is a cool like little series i didn't expect in them to really like tap into this for uh for their their new star wars movies but this is this is literally a direct continuation from like the initial Star Wars movies with you know Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia and Han Solo and all that stuff, and it's sort of like like Luke kind of goes to the dark side. It, it, it it's it's I mean it sounds a little it is a little cheesy, but it's cool. Like I like how they do it in this. Uh, it's a cool series. Heir to the Empire. That was another star, and I have some of the Marvel Star Wars stuff too. This is just my dark horse section. Super Manga Blast. Gotta have that. This this is where they serialized some three by three eyes, which was super cool, and all this other stuff is cool too. Actually, uh, what's Michael? Uh, classic uh, cat manga. You've got uh, Shadow Star, which is actually pretty messed up. They made an anime for it, which is also pretty messed up. Uh, Serific Feather, actually, I was really liked. I'd sort of like to I don't know catch up on that. And they were serializing uh, Oh My Goddess Inherent stuff. Uh, you know, again, kind of like their um, their Dark Horse Presents. It was like a manga presents. I mean, how, how cool is that? Um, this I actually posted on Facebook about Tank Girl. Um, and I won't lie, Tank Girl's a little immature. <laughs> like, it's like, it's sort of like a, like a punk, um, Australian, like, post-apocalyptic, just a lot of swearing and sex and violence and it's it's just it's shot schlocky and fun like I, I really like tank girl it's super cool uh they made a movie of it tank girl 2 tank girl fan terminator these are cool i like these uh and these aren't necessarily like i i think at the time i feel like i sort of enjoyed the alien stories more and predator i think was a little maybe more middle of the road and i, I sort of felt like the terminator stuff was a little more middle of the road too but i loved that they were doing like more terminator stories you know because these these worlds and stories that they build especially sort of the worlds of you know aliens and predator and terminator all these 80s movies i think were so fertile ground for just cool other stories you know i mean i just i love that they kept going in comic form and like gave you more um more stories written in those worlds like that's all you need i mean i, th I probably some of this stuff is better than some of the terminator movies that have come out you know since since the originals there were multiple series what is this one it's, it's called Endgame. there's one called hunters and killers these are all terminator series uh secondary objectives i've got a whole bunch of that stuff um, this is cool. Uh, th this, these were gifts from a, uh, a family member. Uh, this is a, I think a cousin of mine. And, um, like she just knew I liked comics and randomly got me like a couple issues of, of AD and D. I think it's super cool. Uh, and these are fun too. This is, uh, let's see, just issues seven and eight. I never got any more, you know, maybe that would be one of those things that'd be sort of cool to get some more, but I don't know if these were great. You know, they were just they were fun. So I guess we're getting into my DC section, which is not going to be very big. Oh, and I missed this. This is super cool, too. Trekker. I uh, just have one issue of this. Uh, this is issue six. This would almost be something that would be cool to get a little bit more of. It wasn't great. You know, these are like some of the more, I mean, Star Course comics, but they were kind of like a smaller indie publisher. And, uh, but what I really liked about this, this is Dorman. It is, did the, um, the cover on this, and... I don't remember his first name, and I'm sorry, but uh, he I think he did covers for, like, the Aliens. He did all, some other Dark Horse stuff that was super cool, and I mean, you can tell this is an amazing cover. Like, So, I mean, I don't know, when you come like down to, like, illustrators that I liked, oh, I, wanna, I almost want to say Dave Dorman. I don't know, I'd have to look it up. But anyway, um, this is from 1988, you know, like it says anyone on the painting. Uh, it's so cool. I'm just going to go through some of this stuff. It's like a Batman. That's based on the movie, I think. Oh, I always liked these. Batman and the Outsiders. This was like a little mini-series. Uh, I'm never a big Batman fan, but 
I don't know, I got a couple, you know, like Batman vs. Predator. I mean, it's pretty, ch super cheesy. I just, I like Predator, so I was a sucker for that. Um, yeah, these are all crossovers. Batman, Judge Dredd. I don't know, I don't know why. I said I don't like Batman enough to just get Batman on his own, but, like, if it was Batman something else, I thought that that was pretty decent. Um, okay, so then we're getting to, like, the DC Vertigo stuff. Now, so this, these are some books of magic. Um... It's tough with this because I feel like all of the DC Vertigo stuff like Sandman and stuff like that I started getting into some of these, but they're so teen angsty, you know I feel like at the time they really resonated with me and now I'm like I don't think I'm really gonna enjoy going back and reading any of this stuff because I'm like I'm not a teenager anymore and it just and it just it seems so teen angsty and, and emo I just I can't I don't know. Uh, that's just me. You know, I'm not trying to insult anybody that likes Neil Gaiman's Sandman and any of those things. Anyway, I've got a whole bunch of books of magic, actually a lot of it. Um, books of magic I've got right up until number 23. I don't know if I have all of them. Oh, some random issue of Catwoman. Some more Vertigo stuff. I don't know what that is, the Children's Crusade. Um, the... Uh, the Demon. It's got Lobo in it. And again, this was... Uh, um, what's that guy? Simon, Simon Bisley. So I liked his stuff. I guess I've got, this is like Demon vs. Lobo. I guess I sort of liked Lobo. Sandman. I followed that for a while. Again, this is just random Vertigo stuff. Oh, this is interesting. I've got a Grendel Batman crossover. Again, I don't know why. I just, I love these Batman crossovers. I, just, I have no idea. Some issues of Hellblazer. Um, they made a TV series out of that, I think. I think they might have even made a movie with, um, you know, that dude there. Keanu Reeves, I think. Could be wrong. A random issue of Legion. Again, I guess that had Lobo in it. I've got some Lobo comics here. Mr. E. Remember that being pretty interesting. The Robin. Handful of these. I don't even know what this was. I guess it had the holographic cover thing. So I thought that was cool. <laughs> I mean, how... I was a teenager, you gotta cut me some slack, and a kid. Alright, so a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of Sandman, um, oh, Shade, The Changing Man. That was sort of interesting. Um, okay, I was gonna say, I thought, I thought I remember the artist being pretty interesting too. This is Jamie, Jamie Hewlett, I think, that did Tank Girl, so I think that's why. I don't know if he just did the cover or if he did the, the, um, the comics. I never got into Superman very much, but this is, um, so of course, I wasn't just into, into comics in my teenage years. Uh, I was also into comics as a kid, but not that much. Um, my mom got me some comics. When I was a, when I was a kid, I don't know if, I mean, this, was, this is like Superman and the Legion of Superheroes, DC Comics Presents. So I don't know if DC Comics Presents is what this is. Uh, but it's issue 43, uh, but I mean it was 60 cents, so, and I got this like when it came out, so, I think my mom probably maybe got this for me, or maybe I just saw it and I was like, oh, this looks cool, it's like, I don't know, Superman trapped in a cube and these dudes are, I don't know, this is the only Superman comic I have. We're getting into image comics, so this was in sort of the comics boom of the 90s. And, you know, I think some of that was born of, like, 80s kids like me who, you know, started reading these superhero comics and, um, yeah, you know, got into some of these, like, artists and things like that, like Todd McFarlane and uh, Mark Silvestri or Silvestri here, um, doing Cyber Force issue one. Um, so, you know, what was exciting at the time, I think, was just that, you know, they, they this group of creators, Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld and stuff, they broke off and formed their own studio. So they were doing a whole bunch of issue ones also, and some of these guys were great artists, but you know I don't know that they had really good, um, you know, writers uh, like uh, it's Chris Chris Claremont right that <laughs> does like all of the really super cool like Marvel mutant uh, stories and things like that. Um, you know I don't know if they necessarily had somebody like that. These were mostly like sort of creator uh, owned like creator drawn and written comics and so they were doing some interesting stuff um but you know i mean do these have any lasting appeal i mean cyber force i don't know i've got a couple issues of it uh hellshock i'm just gonna flip through some of these here 
the Savage Dragon. Uh, was that Jim? Was that Jim Lee? Looks Jim Lee-ish. Anyway, I got Shadowhawk here. Uh, some Spawn. So we've got like Spawn Issue One. Uh, I probably have like a special edition of Spawn Issue One in here somewhere. Who knows? Um, you know, two, three. I followed Spawn for quite a not that long. Actually, heck, I think I only have up to Spawn Nine. Um, you know, Jim Lee's Wildcats. I was I was deep into all. You know, this was just. It's like they had me. They had their hooks into me. At this point, I was just I was a comic collector when they were doing all this stuff. So this is like some sort of special cover of issue two. I have two copies of it for crying out loud. Young Blood. Now, what I didn't realize, I was just looking into this recently. I really only got into a, a handful of like Marvel mutant books, or you know, just sort of Marvel superhero books in general. But um, pretty much, I like I, I liked the X Men and I liked Spider Man, and that was pretty much it. But I had, I'll probably find in here a couple issues of like the New Mutants and things like that. And um, in retrospect, I am pretty curious about like what was going on in the New Mutants. Sort of like from around when I had first started collecting X Men, um, just because it was interesting. Like I remember I had I'll I'll run across it anyway. So what I'm getting to is apparently um, Rob Liefeld ended up. Um, drawing the New Mutants at some point. And I, I wasn't really, I, I wasn't following the New Mutants at that time, but I didn't realize that it actually went um, basically directly from New Mutants to X... God, what was it? X-Factor? God, I can't, I can't even remember. Was it X-Force or X-Factor? Anyway, whatever, whatever, I mean, it was X-Force. Whatever the thing, I'll, they'll be in here. Um, that he started doing was basically directly like a rebranding of New Mutants. Anyway, so Rob Layfield sort of like almost killed the New Mutants to a certain extent. So anyway, the, the young blood. this sort of reminds me of a New Mutants-ish thing um, of his. That was his own thing. Issue one, yay. So yeah, so I've only got two issues of Young Blood. Um, but yeah, so now we get into so this is Marvel stuff. So this is sort of, you know, this Marvel was a staple. You know, sort of Marvel and DC of, of a lot of comics at the time. Um, this is actually sort of cool. Uh, this is number one in a two-issue limited series, and I never, I never got the second one. But uh, 2010, uh, this is like a movie tie-in with uh, the follow-up to 2001, and. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I basically this was around the time when, I, as a kid, I would pick up stuff off the newsstand. You know, they had a, they had a little rack, uh, spinning rack at the drugstore, and I would go to the drugstore with my mom sometimes when we were in town, and I would buy a handful. You know, maybe you know one, two, three comics. You know, they were seventy five cents each. So, um, you know, and I would so I would get stuff around. So this that was something I just picked up off the rack. Um, Amazing Spider-Man. This is the first issue of Amazing, Amazing Spider-Man that I got, and this this didn't start me collecting Amazing Spider-Man, which is weird. I I, I liked it. Uh, I like Spider-Man, but um, so this was issue. Let's see, two fifty four, sixty cents. I don't know when this is from. It's in the eight, like the late eighties, probably sometime. This one is two ninety three. Um, starting with this Craven the Hunter thing. Um, the, this seemed, you know, again, it's sort of like one of those is does the superhero die kind of thing so I guess I don't know like I mean I was a kid and somehow this just caught my attention so I started picking these up this is uh, part two and this actually went through the three if you can imagine three different spider-man um, series so this is amazing spider-man this is the fifth part of this uh, Craven the hunter um, and then you had this mad dog ward when he gets put into um, yeah an insane asylum. Of course, you got issue 300 here, um, and I, I swear I started collecting this a little bit before issue 300. Maybe I started collecting a little after issue 300. Maybe I had to go back and get. I don't. I don't know how it worked, but I. I, I know I started getting the um, the Todd McFarlane Spider-Man issues, and I thought it was I thought it was before 300, but I don't know. So anyway, you've got. Um, you know, this stuff, 301, 302, 303. Anyway, I, I started collecting Spider-Man. Um, the Amazing Spider-Man at some point. I mean, I guess I started collecting. I mean, 294 is pretty far along, and I don't think this was 
about McFarlane. So I mean, maybe he maybe he started right on issue 300. I don't know. Anywho, so I have a fair amount of Amazing Spider-Man. Not not a lot actually. It's pro probably barely even 20, 30 issues. But um, you know, it's. I mean, that represents like a good couple few years worth of time. I mean, th these are things I would literally buy on the newsstand when they came out every... And they'd come out well, once a month, once every two weeks, you know, kind of a thing. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, when you're a kid, that's a, that's a pretty big commitment. You know, I wasn't like subscribing to a, a service. I mean, these didn't all just come out at the same time. They came out over time, and you had to go, and you had to go out of your way to, to pick them up each, each month or every couple weeks. Uh, I picked up this one Amazing Spider-Man Super Size, uh, the Evolutionary War. So this was something I think that was that was definitely pre like the 300 issue and um, that sort of things. This was more of an earlier uh, Spider-Man thing that I just picked up. You know, again, sometimes you'd find these. Um, I don't know somehow. Sometimes these specials. They just I don't know for some reason they would catch your attention. Either they were like this is super sized annual and. Um, you know, they seem sort of like one-shots. I mean, this has Daredevil in it. it uh, it's got Speedball. It almost seems like maybe this is the introduction of Speedball. Um, this is something I picked up uh, after the fact. I didn't get this when it, when it came out. Uh, this is something I picked up from, like, a comic shop or something. Because this was the first uh, appearance of Rogue, and I wanted to read that. So I just bought the comic. It, I probably spent a little extra on this. This was, like, a 75-cent comic. I probably spent, who knows what, 8 bucks or 10 bucks or six bucks or something on this uh you know it was a little, a little more than than uh it was a little collectible because it's the first appearance of rogue but um i totally wanted to check it out this is another king size annual i guess that's why they're together <laughs> of the avengers this is probably the only avengers comic i even have uh cable yay i have a single issue of conan the barbarian it's something i randomly picked up uh issue 223 it's kind of cool um Deathlock, the first collector's item. I had to get, I had to get that at the time. Um, I get like a couple issues of that. I don't know. There's like a special from a four-part something. Um, Death's Head Two. This was kind of cool. I remember um, the death of Death's Head. Well, whatever. I have a handful of Fantastic Four issues. I don't even really know how I ended up with these. Uh, I may have just picked them up, you know? Uh, oh, well, this one in particular I think I thought was cool because it's like they mixed up the Fantastic Four. It seems like I think the Fantastic Four, like, disappeared or something, and so some of the, like, mutants and superheroes decided to make a new Fantastic Four. So, you know, that seems cool. Uh, this is like the Hulk, Ghost Rider, Wolverine, and Spider-Man. You know, and I guess this is how I would be introduced to some of these other uh, characters and teams and stuff like that. But I never, um, I never collected a lot of these things. I really liked X Men and Spider Man. We got Fantastic Four, um, Generation X. But uh, these actually were cool because I like the, um, I like the artist that does these. I to I forget who this is. Um, the cover here says Chris. And Bucky, Chris, Chris whom, I don't know, uh, another generation next. Anyway. So I think of that as kind of like another take on the New Mutants, sort of. Uh, Ghost Rider. Uh, fantastic first issue, I don't know, they like re, I think I guess they redid Ghost Rider. They restarted it, it looks like, or maybe, maybe he, I don't know. Did he never have his own comic? I, I assume he did. So anyway, um, anyway, I got the first one of that, and I got the fifteenth one, I guess, because had a cool cover. Uh, but I started getting a little bit of Ghost Rider. Um, I have issue eighteen. I've got issue twenty-seven. I guess, honestly, I guess just just a, just a handful. Uh, after this, it's like I'm gonna have these in my hands. I'll put some of these up. Hellstorm, um, the Infinity Gauntlet. They're doing a movie series about this now. Um, and I think I thought the Infinity Gauntlet stuff was pretty cool, but I don't know that I really, like, collected the... all the cross... I think it was this was one of those crossovers. I don't know. I guess I didn't know much about it. This was just sort of like a... Uh, it's another issue one, so I guess I had to pick that up. Um, some Marvel Tales. 
just a random issue. Again, you know, I just I just buy these off the newsstand. I didn't know, you know, I just if something looked cool, I'd just pick it up. These are kind of cool. Uh, Marvel Universe uh, Update 89. So this was uh, a 1989 roster of like all the characters in um, in Marvel. So this this was a really cool way to like get up to snuff on like what are some of the cool superheroes. There's two issues of that. Um, and random issue of Moon Knight. I think this was this looks like Jim Lee or one of those guys drew this, so that's probably why I picked it up. It's just issue 19. It's also got like oh, <laughs> Wolverine does not appear in this comic. That's actually really funny. It has Spider-Man in it too, and I like Spider-Man. So. so yeah, here we go. So this is uh, Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man. So this is more that continuation. It's funny how like when I noticed on the newsstand that this was this little mini series, I really went out of my way to collect this because I wanted to see what all happened in the series. So this is uh, the conclusion to ascending. Actually, maybe I didn't go out of my way. Is this descent? No, I think this is that um, that six part with Craven the Hunter and stuff. Anyway, this is this weird one where he was institutionalized. Um, you know, again, I guess I, I I don't think of myself as like a, a Punisher reader or a Fantastic Four reader or any of these things, but I tried out a lot of these. Just, you know, pick up an issue. I've got Punisher, a couple Punisher War Journal, Quasar, <laughs> Sectars. Now this was this was something when I, earlier when I was a kid. So, um, you know, who knows when this is from? Sometime in the eighties. You know, toy tie-ins and stuff like that. I have a handful of that kind of stuff in here. Got an issue of Silver Surfer. A couple issues of those, I guess. Um, oh yeah. So speaking of when I was a kid, so here we've got the uh, the Smurfs. So, you know, this is probably one of the very first comics I ever had. So, you know, I don't know if I mentioned already, but like, you know, my, my mom, my mom kind of started my comics collecting habit, I guess, just by buying me a few issues of comics when I was a little kid. So, um, you know, stuff like the Smurfs, this is like issue three from who knows when. This was again back when they were 60 cents. So whenever that was. And then of course Todd McFarlane's like, let's redo Spider-Man thing. Of course I had to get five copies of the stupid first edition. But yeah, you know, I got all these because I was, I was big into Spider-Man. So it was cool they were doing like a new Spider-Man series. So I, I picked up a bunch of those. Let's see. Oh, so some, these are some old uh, Star Wars issues. This actually is probably older than that Smurfs one. It's, it's 50 cents. Um, so this one I had when I was a kid because I was a huge Star Wars fan. So my mom probably got me like a couple issues of Star Wars. These are pretty cool actually. I like I sort of like the old like Star Wars comics. They're, they're pretty neat. So for the most part we got some random a couple random things, but um Transformers. Now this was a real transition period for me in terms of comics collecting, I guess. Because this again was when I was really young. So, you know, later than some of those other ones you can see 75 cents here uh this is you know my copy of two it's got a little tear there it's you know these these were read a lot and went through some um well i guess i have another copy that was not as torn um they went through quite a bit but uh so the main thing was i think this might have been the first one that i got here and it's got spider-man on the cover so that was attractive to me but it was transformers and i was big into transformers so you know i had transformers toys and stuff like that so when they started making a comic book I was I was on top of that, and uh, my buddies and stuff were really. This was like fourth grade for me, so that's gonna that's gonna age you know, age I me mean, probably third and fourth grade maybe, but at least at least fourth grade. Uh, I remember was, you know, Transformers comics time, and um, so I actually had to go back, and I I think I had these two, and I but I didn't have the first one. I had to, the first one here. I had to go back and get this a little bit later, um, but the long story short is basically. Transformers was probably the first comic series that I really started getting into the series and really started collecting. So what I did, I mean, I basically got, you know, I, I got, again, handfuls of issues here and there on the newsstand, but I, it was the first comics that I subscribed to. Uh, but I basically, because you could subscribe to comics and they would mail them to you, they, and they would usually treat them really poorly in the mail, they'd just shove them in your mailbox. But, um, but I actually... Uh, I have, I think I have all of the original run of Transformers comics. I could be wrong. This is issue 50, and this might have been the last one. Oh, okay. No, here we go. 
but it, it kept going. So this is 50. It just has a different look. So it kept going a little after that. We've got 59. We've got 60. So maybe 60 is the last one. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it went kept going for a little bit. Uh, and we got they had some you know spin-off series headmasters and stuff like that. Anyway, that was when I was a kid. I I really liked those. These are cool too. These are kind of like those. Were they Marvel Universe? Anyway, these are Transformers Universe, so this is like, it covers all the Transformers. This is super cool. I liked this when I was a kid a lot. I have four issues of that. I think that's the whole thing. Um, so yeah, so we get into the Uncanny X-Men. These seem a little out of order, because this is not my first issue of X-Men and the Uncanny X-Men. Uh, this is issue 281. It's just sort of random. I don't know. Uh, 282, I mean, it's not random because these are in order, but I don't know why these are 283, 284. Um, I think these were ones that I went back, because I don't think I was actually collecting once they got into, like, the 280s here. Um, so I went back and, like, re-collected those. That's probably why they're out of order. Oh, and so back into, like, my, my toy tie-in stuff. You know, again, the hook, line, and sinker, they got me with these visionaries. They had, like, a cartoon and the toys. So I started getting the comics. Uh, actually, I got quite a few of the comics. This ended up being the last issue, issue six. I think it just got canceled because it was a crappy tie-in, toy tie-in comic. But uh, I liked it, apparently, when I was a kid. But yeah, and these are kind of cool. We've got uh, Web of Spider-Man. Um, so again, I think I, I dug Wolverine and Spider-Man as characters. I mean, Fair enough. I mean, they're popular characters, so I think that's probably why I got Web of Spider that issue of Web of Spider Man because Wolverine is in it. Uh, and then this was part of this crossover with this um, this six part series that I went out of my way to to get. This this was a crossover one too, I guess. Um, Willow. I really liked Willow when I was a kid, so when that movie came out, I had to get all of the comics uh, associated with it. It's a little four part series, I think. <clears throat> so yeah, we've got X. X Force God when they did the new thing. I... This this is embarrassing for me here. Like uh, like how deeply I was into like the whole when they when they did all these uh, you know reboots and new issues and special covers and God it's just they they had me. We got X Men here uh, when they did the new. The new first issue, you know, it's not the uncanny X-Men stuff. So I think what's going on is we pretty much end the Marvel stuff at the rebooted X-Men. And Uncanny X-Men I just had been reading, so I put it in my other box. So that's why it's not in, it's not mixed in with my Marvel stuff where it should be. So we're going to go into some non-Marvel comics again. And I take that back. This is Epic Comics, which is actually an imprint of Marvel. We've got this Hellraiser, um, like a one-off, I think. Um, anyway, it's like, it's like Ren, it's sort of like short stories based around this Hellraiser universe. I really liked Hellraiser, like the movies when they came out, were the, you know, the Clive Barker and that whole thing. I sort of got into Clive Barker a little bit, so I, I picked this up when I saw it. Um, this might also, I guess this is also Epic Comics. This is a, um, Meltdown, a Havoc and Wolverine thing. Yeah, they must have made out well with these specials because I was always picking them up <laughs> when I wouldn't. I mean, maybe it's partially because it's you know sort of intimidating to pick up issue like 255 of some random thing, but you know, like a one-off, you're like, oh, maybe I'll check that out, see if it's cool. Uh, Slain, the Horned God. Um, this is specifically because I like Simon Bisley, and th this is really interesting because he, he wholesale rips off a character from uh, from Battle Angel, from, from Gunham, that, um, uh, I forget the guy that, that draws Battle Angel, uh, is, but anyway, he rips off one of his characters for his, for Slain, it's super weird. Anyway, that's, a uh, published by Fleetwood, and, um, yeah, I don't know, I have all of these, I think, two, three, I mean, I guess, I don't know if I have all of them, I have several of them, I don't know how long it went for, but, um, again, when I was a kid, I have an old Richie Rich comic. I used to, I used to read this comic a lot. Just one comic, one Harvey Comics, Richie Rich. It's got uh, whoever the witch is there, Wendy or something, and Casper the Friendly Ghost. Got all kinds of characters in there. All right, so this is cool. So we're getting into Mirage Studios, and I did a whole video on my introduction and fandom around the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I've talked about it recently too. Uh, anyway, uh, Mirage Studios. 
did all kinds of interesting stuff. Here we have Gizmo, which I think was a character that appeared in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comics, and here's, uh, they have their own, um, their own series. I have several, I don't know if it's all of them or not. This is like Mirage Studios Presents, I don't know if it's, anyway, I don't know if they had a Mirage Studios Presents, kind of like a Dark Horse Presents. Um, this is Mirage Studios Presents Gobbledygook, which is a bunch of short stories, which is pretty cool. Uh, again, these are, well, I don't know, I don't know if these are all, um, you know, Eastman and Laird or not. Tales of the Green Hornet, this was an issue one, so I had to get that. Um, so here we go, Eastman and Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but this is the Archie, um, the Archie series, so this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures. So this is, I think, when they started licensing it out and they made, you know, toys and comics and all that stuff, and, and you know, uh, whether I want to admit it or not, this is my first introduction. This was the first Turtles comic that I got. And once I got this, th then one of my buddies turned me on to the, um, the Eastman Laird original Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles comic. Now, uh, come to find out this particular cover is actually an alternate, like a second printing cover, I think, of, I think this is issue seven, maybe something like that. So I got a handful of these. We've got uh, book 20 here. This is book 27. I didn't, you know, I wasn't necessarily able to collect these all on a super regular basis. This is from March 1990, so we're all, all the way up to book 29. Um, book 30. Anyway, I started collecting these, and these aren't all necessarily, like, uh, the, you know, the original creators basically, like, wrote and drew the first however many good chunk of the turtles, and then, like, they had a whole bunch of guest, like, artists and, and, and writers and stuff do it, which was cool, too. Uh, I really liked those. But anyway, I have more turtles comics. Those those weren't necessarily all of the ones that I have, um, but uh, that was just a chunk of them. Okay, so this is super weird. Um, Ralph Snart Adventures. Um, now this is just shocking humor unbound from Now Comics. And if you can imagine, just try to imagine this, this was on the newsstand. So as I'm a kid, I'm looking at like the, you know, the spinner at the drugstore and I'm picking out my, um, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, maybe at that point a couple Spider-Man issues and things like that. And uh, you've got Ralph Snart Adventures where he's being electrocuted in the electric chair and they're toasting marshmallows on his, his dying body. Um, this was a really messed up comic, but it's super interesting. Um, for some reason, like, me and my buddy um, in grade school were, were super into this. And, I, you know, it's like now you've got all kinds of like kids are into all kinds of weird crap on the internet because you know that you just you think is funny kind of because you're a kid i mean granted th these are funny <laughs> but it's basically like it's this weird um it's all it reminds me of something like rocco's modern life or um like Duckman or something like that in terms of its sense of humor where it's like it's really it's kind of about modern life i mean you got this this dude who's basically like being terrorized by his boss and he's he's basically this like ex he's like a frat boy he just likes drinking beer and like I don't know being a jerk and um and it's and it's like it's like the the insane rambling it's like super surreal kind of like I mean he goes insane like in an insane asylum and like he uh, you know, has these weird fantasies about the, like this lizard guy that doesn't exist and all that stuff. It's just, it's a weird comic. Anyway, I collected a fair amount of that. I've got a, a handful more uh, issues of that. Um, just something I liked when I was younger. Um, again, another, when I was really young, probably something my mom got me, Ewoks. Um, and this was one of the earlier ones, well, maybe one of the earlier ones where I had multiple issues, where they sort of connected together, even though this is issue four and that one's issue one. And I don't know if I had any two and three ever. Uh, another one my mom got me, it happens to be issue one of Fraggle Rock. I always thought Fraggle Rock was cool, and uh, so my mom got that for me. And back into the toy tie-ins. Um, I was I was very susceptible to toy tie-ins as a kid. And, you know, I, I give myself permission, you know, I, I'm, I'm not too hard on myself. Specifically for stuff like the Transformers, because that was really super cool, and those were cool toys. And Masters of the Universe, I really liked... Um, the cartoon and the comics are cool and the toys were cool. I used to, I used to like them. So this is another one of those ones that I collected a little bit. You know, I didn't go nuts. There's probably, this one about the motion picture. I guess I'm honestly like, I, I have like four issues of that. So I didn't collect it a whole lot. Some random stuff from like Techno Comics when Gene Roddenberry was doing 
stuff and whatever. Um, some fan comics. Uh, so Antarctic Press, um, Ninja High School. You know, once I started getting into um, um, anime and, and manga a little bit, you know, I got a couple of Antarctic Press's stuff. These things were a little hard to track down, so I didn't get a lot. Uh, manga zine and stuff like that, basically a fan zine. Um, they did Vampire Princess Mew, which I talk about the anime in several of my videos. Oh, and this is actually cool. So this is something I had when I was a kid, and this was... Um, this was more of my introduction to Robotech than the cartoon really was. It's this Robotech 3D issue. This is the, the, the beginning of the story when they're taking, I don't know, whatever the ship is in Macross that they take out into space for the first time and get attacked by aliens. Uh, so this is issue one. This is, I don't even know, oh, Comico, I guess it says right on it. Uh, but these came with 3D glasses and it was 3D. And man, let me tell you, this was super cool when I was a kid. Um... Definitely, you know, I would say that led into, you know, my getting into anime and manga and stuff a little bit later. One issue of Akira. Okay, so now we get into some X stuff. And I think one of the main crossovers, probably the first real X crossover that I got into, aside from, you'll see, you'll see a little bit of others. But uh, anyway, it was Inferno. So I ended up getting Excalibur um, because I wanted to catch the Inferno crossover and see sort of what was going on in that. So I've got a couple issues of... Excalibur with the Inferno storyline. Uh, next we have the New Mutant. So this was again one of those supersized annuals and um, I just picked it up because I was like, oh, I don't know, it's like an annual and it seems cool. And oh, This was a buck seventy-five. I don't know what the regular comics were around that time. They might have been up to around a dollar. Um, so you, you spent a little bit more on this, but I, I was like, well, let me see what's going on in that. Um, New Mutants you know, uh, some more New Mutants, so this is the Inferno stuff. Again, I got this this New Mutants because I wanted to follow the Inferno storyline, one of the first crossovers that I really, you know, got into. I guess aside from, like, those Spider-Man crossovers, that sort of introduced me to that concept. Um, this is, actually, this is older than those, isn't it? That's issue 80. Oh, no, this was issue 73. It's not that old. Um, another random issue of New Mutants. Okay, here we go. So this is, I think, New Mutants when Rob Liefeld started getting into it. So I guess I didn't know of that. And it does have, like, the Rob Liefeld characters and stuff in it. Um, oh yeah, so an old issue of Uncanny X-Men. Again, this is one I got after the fact because this is sort of when Rogue shows up in the Uncanny X-Men. So again, I, I like Rogue as a character. And that's one of the reasons why, like, I really hate how she was handled. I mean, I don't hate it, but I'm not a big fan of how Rogue was handled in the... Um, in the movies, just because, you know, she's alright, but she's just, she's not, like, the rogue, like, you know, because I mean, like, I was familiar with her introduction here, she was a villain, and she had, you know, was, I don't know, raised by Mystique or something like that, and then she, um, like, absorbs Carol Danvers' powers and, uh, you know, sort of becomes, like, you know, Captain Marvel, there's a new Captain Marvel movie coming out, um, so she basically has all of those powers plus her her absorbing powers and like she just, she was just so cool like Rogue. I'll talk a little bit more about the comics that got me into the Uncanny X Men specifically, and I'll talk a little more about Rogue. So this was one I think you can see I spent five bucks on this. I went back and got this to fill in. Um, this is like I think around one of the first issues of the X Men that I got, but I didn't I didn't really know the full story, so I think I got this after the fact. Uh, an X Men annual. Oh, here we go. So this, this I think is the first X-Men comic I got. This is 211. I don't know, it was 75 cents. This was sometime in the 80s, probably the late 80s. Um, yeah, I just thought it was cool because Wolverine looked badass on the cover and I was like, oh, I mean, this is one of the first like sort of more adult comics that I got. And I, you know, I was probably pretty young at the time, nine, eight, nine, ten, somewhere around in there. Um, I don't know. I don't know how old I was. Who knows? Um, but I, uh, Anyway, that was cool. I guess, and I think that's why... Yeah, see, this one's 210, so I wanted to see what was happening immediately before that. But uh, I didn't get that until years later. This was my first X-Men comic. And I didn't start collecting X-Men. Um, you can see here I've got 230. So it was, it was probably, I don't know, what was that, 11 to... So probably like a year and a half, two years later when I started 
to collecting X-Men, but this wasn't actually the first issue. Uh, I got, I've got that one, I've got 232, 233, so this was the brood that started to come in. So, you know, that striking cover with Wolverine on the, on the front, this was another striking cover with Wolverine on the front, and I was like, that looks really freaky. So, uh, I picked this up, I picked this up, um issue 234 I was on vacation with my folks and there's something about you know when you're a kid you don't have a lot of agency over your life you know you end up doing what your parents are doing and doing what they tell you to do and this and that so you know I think being on vacation I like I kind of just wanted something that that I had a certain amount of control over and so I was just you know again we were we were out somewhere and there was a comic you know stand and so I, I picked up a couple issues of X-Men off of that comic stand, and this was one of them. Um, you know, again, it was just, it was like, it was something for me, I could just stop and read the comic while we're, while we're doing our thing, you know, in a hotel or something. And it was awesome. I loved it. Uh, you know, again, it was just like, it was like the brood, uh, it was the end of that brood story. So I picked up some of those earlier issues and I wanted to uh, follow up. But here's, so this was, this was the other issue that I picked up along with that, uh, that, um, one with Wolverine on the cover, and you can see it's Rogue, you got Rogue and Wolverine, and this was really kind of my introduction to Rogue, and she kicks butt in, you know, in, I mean, I don't know, who knows, she's tied up, and they're both captured in this, so maybe she doesn't kick that much butt, but I think she comes in and, like, saves Wolverine, uh, and anyway, it's really cool, there's this whole storyline with her and Wolverine, and anyway, it just, it got me super into her character, I really like that, and this is, you know, this is that time of X-Men, that's, it's my time of X-Men, you know, um, either in the 80s, sort of when, like, Rogue, like, not Rogue, Storm had her, like, mohawk there in that first, uh, the Mutant Massacre thing that's kind of introduced me to them, or, like, this time period, when you had, you had, like, uh, what is it, Slingshot? I feel like it's Slingshot, maybe it's something else. Longshot? Maybe it's Longshot, because he's got, like, luck powers or something. Uh, you know, and you had Havoc and stuff, a lot of these characters that weren't, either weren't even in the movies or weren't treated well in the movies. I always loved how Havoc was just like, I don't know, maybe he was like a, the more angsty of the two, um, you know, brothers. And the, Dazzler, I, I miss Dazzler from this time period. And you had like, I mean, Colossus, I love Colossus. And you had Psylocke before she was all like stupided up with, you know, Jim Lee's retake on her, which is fine. I mean, I shouldn't, well, I sounded, I sounded really bitter about that. Anyway, I liked, I liked, I mean, Psylocke, she, she was just a, kind of a side character in these early ones. Um, but anyway, so you got right into the Inferno uh, series, so this, like I said, is probably the first crossover that I started following. And it's really, it's like freaky and demonic and stuff, I thought it was super cool. So, so I'm not going to go through all of my X-Men comics, and again, I don't have that many. I've got maybe, who knows, 30, 40 issues. Um, yeah, I mean, I only collected that for how many years? Not all that long. Now, um, so eventually what happened is... Uh, and I, th I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Mark Silvestri was doing a lot of the artwork when I was reading X-Men, Uncanny X-Men. And so I think because I liked the Wolverine character and because I kind of dug Mark Silvestri's work, uh, I ended up starting to collect Wolverine. It wasn't right off the bat, and I never really got to read the whole Weapon X thing and stuff like that, like a whole lot of other people did. This is actually Jim Lee did this cover, so I don't know, maybe, maybe Jim Lee was penciling these at the time, but uh, anyway, I've got Wolverine 24, um, Wolverine 25, so I probably picked those up around the same time, and I started collecting Wolverine a little bit, uh, 31, it's really spotty, I don't know why I didn't, uh, you know, wasn't collecting it really regularly, but 41, 43, 45, so you know, here and there, again, I think I was buying these on the newsstand, so suffice to say, I actually have, I have a fair amount of Wolverine, I probably don't, Probably not quite as much Wolverine as I have on Kenny X-Men, but probably pretty close, actually. I, I really kind of liked Wolverine. Uh, X-Factor, um, you know, again, some of this might have had to do with the crossover with Inferno, but I picked up a handful of X-Factor. This is 74, um, and I liked Havoc, and I think they moved Havoc into X-Factor, so uh, 73... 72, I don't know why these are out of order, I'm going backwards, 71, <laughs> these, are, so these are in bad, like reverse order. Um, so yeah, I've got back to 69, and then this is 30, okay, these in the 30s here were around when we were getting into uh, Inferno. These are out of order, I must have been reading them. Um, we've got 38, it's a cool cover, uh, but that was during the Inferno series. 
Um, again, here X Factor with Inferno, and you had all the X Men in this, which was super cool. Everybody just looks super badass in that. Uh, so anyway, so I got a handful of X Factor. Is that X Factor? Yes. I got uh, X Terminators. Uh, this was part of. This was in the Inferno also. So you know, kudos to them. I was buying all their Inferno stuff. Uh, oh yeah, so, and now I've got a handful of comics. These were gifted to me from my buddy's stepdad. <laughs> it's kind of complicated, but he's actually a kind of a family family friend also. And um, I don't know, he just knew I like was into comics, and instead of giving them to my friend for some reason, because he's also into comics, he gave them to me. So um, these are some more classic issues. These weren't mine, these were his, one from when he was a kid. So we've got like uh, episode 188 of Fantastic Four, um, these are kind of going backward too. Uh, ish, did I say episode issue one, uh, seventy nine of Fantastic Four? Uh, Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, is this issue ten? Maybe that's that's pretty back there. Uh, old issue of Amazing Spider-Man one sixty six. So these are super cool, and um, you know I haven't actually like cracked a lot of those out to read them, and I should, I'd like to, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm keeping them safe as far as I'm concerned, you know, they're just sitting in my comic boxes. The crazy thing about these is, like, he literally had these in a stack, and they weren't bagged, and they weren't bought, like, backed and bagged, they were just a stack of comics, and he just, he took care of them, but they were just, they were just sitting in a stack on a shelf or something, you got Thor, um, whoops, that's it dropped it on the floor. There's quite a few issues of Thor here. Uh, I don't know what these are. 265, 266. Again, for some reason, these are like in reverse order. 257. Um, I've never even seen this one. <laughs> uh, OMAC? One Man Army Corps from DC? So anyway, I don't know if I'm going to go through all of these, but you know, uh, kind of a bunch of, of more, more classic uh, age. I don't know, this might have been Silver Age? When you're talking those ages, I don't really remember. Um, oh, and this is actually some of these cool, like, Whitman. You know, back when, this was, like, sort of pre-Comics Code Authority, which is super cool. Uh, I kind of wish I'd, like, I don't know, read some more of these kind of comics. I've never really gone back and checked some of these out. This is, like, a Ripley's Believe It or Not. Um, oh, and this actually, so I guess this actually says the date on it. So, 1977. So, this is, well... Uh, it doesn't matter if you guys know how old I am. I was born in 1977, so this is like from the year I was born. Uh, and Incredible Hulk, you know, I never, I never collected Incredible Hulk uh, in particular. My buddy in grade school was interested in it. Iron Man. I you didn't see a single issue of Iron Man in, in my my stuff there. Um, this is awesome. Master of Kung Fu, the hands of Shang Chi. Uh, oh, yeah, here's another Whitman one. Twilight Zone. That's pretty cool. Uh, what a DC one, Justice League. So yeah, anyway, there's probably 20, 30 more of those issues of sort of like a comics collection within a collection where it's it's not my stuff from when I was a kid. It's it's my buddy's my buddy's dad. So anyway, in the years since I was actively collecting individual issues, which you see really was in my my grade school years and my uh, high school years and into my college years a little bit, uh, I have gotten some stuff like. Uh, we have Essential X-Men. Um, these are just these big, uh, you know, black and white paperback uh, books. I would probably get these digitally now. Uh, I hate to say that, but, you know, I only have so much room and willingness to lug this junk around. But, you know, uh, I wanted to check out these stories from sort of just before I had started reading. So this is like... Uncanny X-Men 199 through 213, plus like some of those other mutant things like New Mutants and X-Men Annual and X-Factor and stuff like that. So this this is uh, really cool. And then you get into uh, Volume 7, which uh, is getting into Uncanny X-Men 214 through 228, which I think is right up to like the stuff that I had started reading. Um, yeah, you know, cool guy, you know, Chris Claremont, Barry Windsor Smith, um, Mark Silvestri, or Adams. Those are the names I know, there's other names in here. But uh, I, I loved this era of X-Men and mutant comics. And um, yeah, you know, I would probably get another, you know, maybe another collection of X-Men Essentials to fill in some of the gaps in my collection. Uh, just to get that time period of, I don't know when that was, the late 80s or something like that. Uh, maybe even the mid 80s. So uh, anywho, um, 
hope this was interesting. Uh, I just figured as long as I had these boxes out, I'd show off some of what I have. And, uh, you know, I figured if you guys are interested in collecting comics, like I said, uh, X Corn Muffin X kind of got me back into looking at my old comics. So, you know, who knows? Maybe if, if, you, if you watch this video, uh, Joe, you know, um, I don't know if you have any thing to say about your own comics collection or something like that, but I'd love to hear about it. Uh, and anyone else, too. You know, if you guys want to tell me about your comics collections or post a video, that would be awesome. And thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys later.